fake streams, fake streams. We know, we know that it's a thing and it's been a thing for a long time. And recently some artists were exposed from having fake streams. All right. So let's bring it up. We'll just bring up the academics post. Many of y'all probably seen videos about this, but I promise you, we're going to add some additional insight, obviously, from what we do, because uh, we're in this for real. So, Atlantic Records is under fire after fans discover blatant view botting and bot comments on their artists' recent music videos. Don Tolliver, Lil Uzi Vert, Roddy Rich, and A Boogie. Let me be clear. Atlantic Records is never going to be under fire from fans. I don't care what you say. Fans can talk that talk like it's, there's there's no real heat coming from fans mm -hmm. for Atlantic Records, not at all. Like <laughs> this is it's, it's nothing. It's too distant. Some of these indie labels, let's just say, if it was some something was going on with the Migos, little baby, and like QC, mm -hmm. they could feel the heat. Yeah. All right. Atlantic Records ain't feeling the heat. Yeah. All right. It's just not right. Like matter of fact, they have some of these indie. <laughs> labels in place so they don't have to feel the heat. They don't deal with that, that, that stuff on that level. And fans don't understand. There's no identification of it enough. So yeah. anybody going break? They don't care about yeah, that. Yeah, anybody <laughs> going break. Let's, let, let's, for real. It's like getting in trouble the day before Christmas break. Right? You don't care. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So you got Don, right? Yeah, he had view bots on his um, comments. And it's pretty obvious when you look at it. You can see all these comments that are all these emojis. We, we know what it looks like. A lot of emojis and fake stuff. You also got like the the foreign comments that becomes a, a thing for people. And the foreign comments could be real foreign comments or they could be fake, right? One way or yeah. another. But I don't understand them enough to know, right? Yeah. At the very yeah. least, you know that this ain't popping in America. So it's either fake or it's uh, hitting somewhere, I yeah, don't, I don't know it's, about. it's hitting somewhere, and they're running <laughs> ads to foreign space to run run up some numbers. Yeah, we know that's a thing now. And and also, you have to look for the overly optimistic comments. That was also a song. When overly optimistic. Oh, like overly positive. Like this is great, bro. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yo, this yeah. is amazing. Keep it up. It's like, like yeah, it's it's optimistic. <laughs> But it's so basic and yeah. no substance is general as hell. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. Hey, this is fire, man. <laughs> hey, they don't know about those yet. <laughs> they don't know about those. Right? So, there's a couple things that come from this. Right? A lot of people are surprised. I don't know why. Yeah, I was just about to say, well, why? At this point, bro. Right? And by the way, you know, Don, Don Tolliver, Cactus Jack. There's some people on that Travis Scott video we got talking about his bots blowing up, acting like Travis would never do bots. Why would he ever have to do bots? Travis sold out. Yeah. Beer and tacos. Who is this guy? I don't trust this guy. Yeah. And this guy is nobody. It's like, oh, that's his ex-manager. Well, he's ex-manager for a reason. Well, actually, his ex-manager got rid of Travis. Well, still, you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, look, let's keep it clear because people don't get that context with us, but we always talk about it. But let's actually at least say it on one episode. We view bots different than y'all, bro. Yeah, much different. Like, when we talk about somebody having bots, we're not talking about it from a positive or a negative. Ja'Cory in that episode literally said, like, hey, man, look, y'all might want to find somebody on y'all team who can flip <laughs> something like this, right? So it's not like we highly encourage bots for every artist and every, um, and every moment in time, and we need to have real. But there is a legitimate part of the game that bots have a function. They help. They they have a function. They have a small piece in the in right the, in the phone in the overall picture. Yes, they they have a piece. <laughs> so let's let's talk more about that because if you're a brand new artist, you're working from ground zero. Many of y'all um, have tried to work with us and y'all have bots, hmm. and we'll be like, nah, All right? Why? Because it makes it hard to see what the marketing is actually doing. What's in effect? You might see your streams going down. Um, no, your followers going down, even though the campaign is gaining you legit followers, but you're still losing all these followers from your old shit, yeah, right? From this yeah. fake stuff that was never real in the first place. So it makes it hard to see. That's why we don't like working with those people. If you can have a managed expectation, we actually will take you and say, all right, you understand because you got this fake shit, it's not going to just pop. It's not going to start moving. There's like, some things we can't tell you because we can't see it. Exactly. Yeah. some things that we can't tell you because the data's muddy. Like, all that, cool. That's a huge reason. Why does it not make sense for artists ground up? Because it's fake and now you literally do that. 
create an environment where we can't trust what's going on. You don't know what's real. You don't know how many people are going to show up to your show. You don't know how many people are would sign up for an email or stream your song because all this is fake. That's why bots don't make sense for most of these artists, and that's why we we t- talk about it from that side of it. But the other side of the game, look, man, a lot of times to keep doing business, you got to get creative. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like that's that's all that's going on. They're getting creative because there's multiple things that they're trying to accomplish. And I can't say for these artists specific situations why they're doing bots on their specific situations. But let's just go through some reasons people do do bots, and they actually can make sense. Some of them are still like it's a tough situation to be in. Let's talk about one of the toughest to me: maintaining an image that's outscaled the actual fan base and performance of the music, right? Yeah. So earlier, you talked about Sweetie. You just said Sweetie still doing the music to kind of like keep that thing moving and then flip it into everything else. And that'd be the sole reason she might do it going Mm -hmm. forward. Well, that goes to the LeBron analogy I used, right? I know I need a win in this category. I need. I keep playing because basketball is my main thing. Keep the main thing the main thing. But while I'm in this main thing, a part of my brand is being that nigga. Yeah. So I got to stay that nigga or close to that nigga. I got to at least be one of the niggas. <laughs> <laughs> like, if I want to keep leveraging, yeah. you know, yeah. my brand the same outside of this space, and if it gets too too rough, I need to just like flip fully and move on, right? That analogy plays on a lot of these artists. If I'm on this level, part of my level is being a level seven artist instead of a level two. I'm popped. I'm official. You know, I have buzz. I need to maintain as much of an image on this level as possible while the music catches up. I know this is a problem. These teams that have that issue, they know it's an issue. Yeah. Right. And I need to figure out how to maintain as much of this image as possible until the music catches up in, in reality. Right, it's like that gateway drug type shit, man. It's like I was, or it's like the this the stripper. I'm only doing it to get through college, you know what I mean? Like, hey, I'm only doing this shit till I get a real fan base. Like, I'm just trying to do it. Like, you know, this year I'm doing seventy percent bots. Next year I'm doing fifty percent bots. Next year I'm doing twenty percent bots. Oh shit, I got a real fan base. You know, that's a legit thing, right? Some people are in a set scenario where they're trying to figure it out that way. Yeah. Right, because the brand hit of barely having any streams is too detrimental. Right, that's one scenario. Yeah, yeah. Mm. That's a tough position to be in. That's the hardest one to be in for sure. That's legitimately that's the hardest one to be in. This is a lose. It's usually a lose lose. You get found out, you lose. If you don't do it and shit don't go the same, you lose. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And my problem, my biggest problem in that scenario is you're still in a spot where you don't have the fan base that you require for where you are and the energy spent on bots takes away from the energy that can be spent on finding out the right solution and i know we don't think that right as humans we feel like we could do all these different things but there's that switching cost and that lack of creativity that gets taken away because you know you have your out Mm -hmm. right we're gonna have these bots versus forcing ourselves to maybe figure out how we can flip the narrative and maybe just come out with the fact that it's not like where we want it to be. I'm not saying to do that. Like that's not a straight advice. I'm just saying a different angle, right? Or we need to run 10 more shows than we usually would and really tour the hell out of the the, the country. Or we need to figure out how to get our artists in these different positions and collabs or get them in these YouTuber videos or whatever, right? It keeps you from being creative or limit some of your creativity when you have bots a part of it. Again, this is still me not saying don't do them at all. But that's why sometimes I even like, especially when it comes to creative stuff, I like to have someone's fully focused on that. It's like, all right, maybe I got to work on these two things or you got to work on these two things. But then we have one person who's like, hey, bro, all you need to do is be focused on how can we creatively solve this problem. Bro, and and you you run the risk of getting lost in your lost in the sauce. Lost in your that's what lost I'm saying. You have to have somebody yeah. who's dedicated to working on the real thing yeah. only, and that's their only focus. Yeah. Because if you have that, and you got to hold them to that standard, it's like, yeah, I know I'm doing what I'm doing, bro, but I'm not supposed to be still doing this. <laughs> you got to find a way up out of this thing to get us out out this game. You know, yeah. I'm just fighting yeah. off 
you know some of these these villains but bro we got we got to open the fucking uh the door <laughs> to yeah. get out this out this building so there's that the another scenario which is why this bot thing isn't going to go away and it's not about y'all fans always man, man, fans are so they so self-centered bro it's not even always about y'all they're not trying to fool you at all times sometimes they're trying to fool other industry people <laughs> 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 that's the biggest one. It's bro. like, oh, no, bro, one. I need my label to see these numbers. So if you if you a real fan, you would actually support me getting these bots because <laughs> if I get this amount of streams, my label is gonna give me the rest of this budget, and now I can do some more marketing. <laughs> like sometimes it's about shit like that. I gotta yeah. hit milestones. I gotta unlock the rest of my budget, and I can't unless I hit this number in a specific period of time. Or I'm trying to get on a um like a Grammy or like you know improve my case for something. Yeah. Or corporate appeal like so it's not even industry but i'm just trying to make sure that i have this amount of streams so then when i talk to this guy who doesn't know shit about the industry and music and doesn't understand my fan base if i can at least compare my streams and explain myself using some artist that he knows right i can say oh yeah well here's an idea like i remember talking to a guy about black right matter of fact we had a client that was big as fuck themselves or whatever that he knew because he was older, uh, he knew Macy. Okay. He knew so Macy Gray, and he knew her because he was he was in his forties, but he wasn't a super music head, like not at all, not even close. And but he knew Macy because Macy was Macy back in that day, and he was younger then too. And then I was talk, telling him about Black. It was just a conversation or whatever. And I was like, oh, I saw Black say that he was interested in crypto or something like that, or figuring out the NFT or metaverse space in his, in his own way. And he was like, who's that? Well, I was like, black streaming wise is bigger. I had to use that type of a comparison so he could understand how mm -hmm. like significant he was. Now, granted, Macy's streaming numbers, again, are her real numbers are pre-streaming ever existed. Mm -hmm. But still, him not knowing much, I knew that that would do the job, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> So sometimes it's shit like that that these conversations are happening for, and I gotta tweak my streaming for that type of stuff. Yeah, it's so many scenarios, and fans always think it's them. Oh, we're trying to fool them or increase our. It's not about y'all all the time. Like, just to keep it real. So maybe you should find out why. Hey, maybe look, maybe some of the artists we put on y'all. Like, hey, educate y'all fans. Like, hey, bro, we about to do these streaming things now. If you don't want me to have to do these streaming bots, you need to stream my shit three more times. Or matter of fact, we're gonna do it both because this is our goal. I need y'all to help <laughs> help yeah. me help me get there. We gonna bot it. We gonna we gonna triple play it, and y'all only play thirty seconds of it. But you are gonna do that shit? Like maybe it's something like that, right? It'll be yeah. funny if an artist did something like that. But that the bot situation is far more complex than people actually give it credit for, um, which is why we ain't out here like oh someone got bots. Like we exposing them. We about to do that in the title because y'all motherfuckers only click on shit like that. But <laughs> that just is what it is. Yeah, bro. And I, I think you said something important earlier too about like where in the artist's journey do they do it, right? And so it, it, I think what artists have to understand is that the bigger you start to become, it becomes more of a battle of perception than, than real fan base building, right? Yep. So like someone like Uzi, Uzi isn't trying to make new fans, you know what I'm saying? Like probably 80 to 90 percent of rap fans knows who he is or know who he right. is. Now he's playing a game of perception. You know yep. I exist. Let me wow you with these numbers. So if you didn't go check me out because of whatever reason, now you now you want to kind of fall in line, right? Yep. Building a cheap mentality. Like that's the that's the bandwagon effect, right? Like like music snowballs. The more you can make people feel like they're missing out because it looks like other people are enjoying this, the more yep. people want to join in on it. So there's that aspect of it. And, you know, going back to the beginner artists, it's like the bots don't, don't make sense to you because nobody cares about your perception, like, you know? And so it's like, who are you bragging to? There's no real people that you're bragging to these things about. But the other thing I was gonna say too is that, bro, at this point, numbers and even the bot conversation to a degree are all a part of the market <laughs> rollout. You know what I'm saying? So it's, yep. like I said, those milestones, hey, we need to hit 10 million views by this date because the day after that, we want to put a, a, a marketing budget or PR, uh, some PR around the narrative that X artist hit 10 million views in, in, um, in two weeks. There was like, I think it was like one of those videos you've seen, the, the Blackie Speaks, the, the Bob Lamb video. He yes. talked about 
six nine was doing it right like six nine well it wasn't with bots they used to talk about with youtube ads but still it, it falls in the same conversation we, he needed to run these numbers up within a certain time frame so the narrative could be hey i ran these numbers up in this time frame right oh i got 10 million views in 24 hours or i hit 100 million streams in a week right like just, that becomes a part of the marketing yep and like I said, sometimes i think now even the bot conversation is a part of the marketing because the only genre that really or the only genre of fans that really seem to care about botting is rap fans if you pay attention to that when the conversation about bots, Justin Bieber, for example, it was a conversation about bots around, maybe not the last time, but one of them, but those, his fans did not give a fuck, bro. Not they, at did, all. they did not care. When the conversation about bots comes up around rap artists, bro, the whole community loses its shit. Bro, hip hop fans <laughs> are the most critical, most fickle, most fickle. The financial potential is more limited in a lot of ways. Hip hop is a. It's a tougher genre. Hundred percent. Yeah. It's, it's it's tougher genres, not just because of all the the business of it, but literally the fans themselves. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, it's like I can't even cheat like the other artists because y'all won't let me get away with it like their fans will let yeah. them get away with it. You know what I'm saying? Like Justin Bieber out here. There was one point, bro. I remember uh, me and my my homie Sam. We were looking at because he had brought it to me. He was like, "Bro, look at Justin Bieber's top streaming cities." And there was one country. I can't remember what country it was. I remember if it was like Jakarta or some. Some like uh like small country, and it was like Justin Bieber streams from that country were equivalent to like if every person in that country streams from like a hundred times or a thousand times or something. Like every person in the country is like bro. nobody's batting the eye, bro. You know what I'm saying? Nobody, nobody. bats the eye. Don Tolliver gets six smiley faces in a row. <laughs> that shit, that shit news by the end of the day. <laughs> you know Yo, bro, it's crazy, man. Because <laughs> hip hop has there's no other genre I think that has the level of demand for brand music to life congruency yeah. that hip hop has. Yeah. yeah, that type of authenticity. It has to be, you have to represent what you actually talk about in that way. Everybody else gets to be an artist. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of part of the difficulty of this whole uh, situation where they're like, yo, let our hip protect hip hop mm -hmm. and, and black music when they're saying, you know, you don't use our, this shit in our court case. Mm -hmm. I think that's a, a tougher conversation than many want to actually acknowledge, but like that wouldn't be so if we didn't demand so much authenticity or people to speak in certain ways. So yeah, like hip hop definitely has it tough. And kind of like how you mentioned, um, sort of the Baba Lamb video, he talked about what was the thing he said? Artists knew. Uh, he said if artists knew they would stop. That was one thing. He was oh, like, yeah. I wonder if Don Tyler knows. And I, I fucked with uh. First of all, I, I only discovered them recently, you know, like maybe like the last week or whatever. So I oh, Bob Lamb? Yeah, so okay. I, I fuck with your videos, but yeah, um, Bob, Bob Lamb for, uh, for real. But if you want artists to win, I mean, if artists knew, right, they would. They, do you agree with that? Let me just, uh, let me see that. It depends on the caliber of artists. Like okay. th there's a certain subsection of artists I think would care. Um, we work with artists that care, you know what I'm saying? They 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 super anal about yo. It's the bot. You know what I'm saying it's the bot. So is this what's going on? No, nah, it's not. Look at the look at the numbers. Right. What level do those artists tend to be at? If we consider ten to be, let's say top of the mainstream, Drake. Let's say eight be bottom of mainstream. I don't know, give you on or something. I think artists between a one and five really care about it. Exactly. <laughs> And that's when you should care about it yeah. anyway. Because like, you're trying to build something real. Yeah, exactly. Like the, yeah, earlier, it's like the focus at that stage should be about real fan engagement and yep. making sure that there are people that when if you do decide to stack fake engagement on top of it, there are real people vouching for you. Exactly. <laughs> that that's that's what it is. It becomes yeah. your defense mechanism. Mm -hmm. It's that insurance at so the bottom of it. It's real people fake. gonna show up to shows, you actually can make your money, da da mm -hmm. da. That's that's cool. Real people make the fake stuff look believable. You know what I'm saying? It's like when there's a fan in the comments saying, nah, he didn't buy streams. I listen to this shit a hundred times a day. That makes someone that doesn't really understand the situation go like, well, maybe this is some bullshit, right? Or like you said, if the conversation online is, yo, Dunn Tolliver bought it all his views on this video, and then the next day Dunn Tolliver posts a video of a sold out show and you can see real people in the crowd, it completely changes the narrative. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it makes it either less believable to people who aren't really paying attention to it that deep anyway, or people go like the Travis Scott video, right? Like we literally, you can go to that video and look at the comments. What are people saying? Hey, it doesn't matter because he's selling out shows, he's selling merch, he makes great music. Those are the things that artists have to always remember, bro. Fans care when that shit is trash or it doesn't look like it's providing any real world yep. benefits. Because at that point it's like, why are you doing this? This shit clearly isn't working for you. When all of the other dots connect, 
Nobody cares. That's why nobody complains about Justin Bieber doing it. Yep. Maybe he's a great artist. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I don't care. If you bought it up, bro. Just keep putting out good music. <laughs> exactly. Right? Same with Uzi. People saying, oh, like, the I Want a Rock song. That shit's a hit. Nobody cares because yeah. everybody likes the song. You know what I'm saying? Yep. People only care when the other elements of the artistry are subpar to trash. Mm-hmm. If you everything feel else, like you're you're trying to trick them or whatever into liking right? it, yeah, exactly. Even if you, I mean, you're always trying to trick them. That's just this entertainment business. Yeah. Entertainment, the show business, that show, not the in front of the curtains is all tricks, yeah. right? Lights, camera, action, effects, but people don't want to feel it. Yeah, yeah, bro. It's like we, we, for whatever reason, we we just we just want to see it. We don't want to feel like we're a part of whatever you're doing to kind of drive us that. We just want to see the end results of it, right? right? Meet you at the finish line, type of thing. Lie to me, but don't. Let, don't let me know that you're lying to me. Yeah, bro. Keep it a secret. <laughs> Put your phone on D and D. But so so that just becomes like the, the the weird conversation around the whole bot thing is, I, or at least to me is, it's more of a conversation of who is allowed to get away with it. Yeah. Where, and like I said, you between a one and a five, you are not allowed to get away with it. Don't even attempt to get away with it because people like us are gonna find it. Like I can, I can, at this point, bro, it's, it's not hard to spot bots, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Especially the smaller you are, the easier it is to tell if you're using bots or some type of artificial inflation tool, software thing, right? Um, mm-hmm. And then, but like you said, shows are the great equalizer. But if I pull up, I was at, I remember going to this one event, this is, this had to be pre-pandemic. It was for an artist that had just got signed to a label and they were like a new signee. You know how like labels that have the whole like, Yo, come like watch my artists perform and all the industry people come out. But it was supposed to be like a mixed bag one. So it was gonna be industry thing and then like fan fans were supposed to be allowed. Yeah. I remember the artists at the time had like two, three million streams. I mean, monthly listeners, a couple million streams. Pull up to the show, nothing but industry people, no real fans. First, I thought it was an industry thing. I'm like, and somebody was like, no, there's like a couple fans here. Like you start seeing people, a couple, maybe like four or five people, you know, at the stage fucking with them and shit. But nothing real came from it, bro. And it's like, yo, that artist is at a stage where, because now, now I'm in the venue going back and looking up the numbers. Like, man, is this right, bro? You know what I'm saying? You look at her Spotify again. Nope, they're right at 2.3 million monthly listeners. Now they go to Instagram, 400K, whatever it was. I'm like, now, now marketing brand kicks in, and I'm like, nah, I need to do some deep dive. This shit gotta be fake. Start going through my resources and tool bags to figure that out. Start seeing fake followers, start seeing, you know, yeah. certain playlists on it. <laughs> And I remember walking into my friend that invited me to it, and I was like, bro, like, they're already fucking up. Like, like this artist ain't even in the game long. They're already fucking up. She's like, what you mean? Like, fake, 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 fake. 30 people here and 28 of them are industry people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and those other two are probably plus ones. Yeah, yeah. And even to Atlantic Records' defense, I I don't I wonder if they're botting their smaller artists the same way they're botting. Because, I mean, the headlines that have come up are Uzi. Don Tolliver, right, right. Yeah. Artists where it will be believable if, yeah. to people that don't care that much. Playing it are they the are they botting up the artists that they just signed last week? Hopefully not. If they smart, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But probably. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, there was another um take that I wanted to address though. Baba Lam had talked about the uh YouTube ads. Right. And how it's more uh, believable to do yeah. that on YouTube. It's, it is easier to do that on YouTube because yeah. Like he, like he mentioned, right? And, and we've seen people do. You can get those streams pretty easily by throwing some money behind it. And then you get the comments. You're actually making those streams more believable. That's the funny thing about it, mm. right? If you just run ads, people don't believe it because it looks fake to people, mm-hmm. which artists co- co- complain about all the time, like early on, especially when we first start running YouTube ads. It's like, yeah. oh man, the proportions, they don't, they look all, off out of whack. So then you get some co- fake comments that actually looks more believable, funny enough. It's just that these fake comments are just so violating yeah. bad. That's yeah. the issue. And yeah. y'all didn't do anything to labels but make them say, hey bro, we gotta get better tech. Yeah. Like to do it better. It's not gonna stop the train at all. Gotta start going to Fiverr for our bots. Hey, exactly. <laughs> Find us a, a sweatshop below. <laughs> <laughs> somewhere and people to just comment for real which there is a site i remember i was trying to remember it before the pod so but no that there is a site out there that you can actually get real people to make comments yeah you can pay them like a couple cents mm-hmm. yeah, I, yeah i can't think of them it's in my notes somewhere I, i'll figure it out and you know, bring it up on another episode or something but and because we we've, we've been able to at least defend ourselves against the youtube thing by breaking down the numbers of what it looks like for youtube engagement for ads, right, normal engagement, viral engagement. And I know like with us, 
typically we we use like the view ratio to tell right so it's get the amount the formula divide the likes by the amount of views you got whatever that percentage is that's your like the view engagement so what we would always see is like if it's between one and three percent they're probably running ads on it yep it's between like let's say that four to like seven percent that's about typical engagement for someone that's not marketing their music whatsoever like 10 percent or higher is like that's just going like viral or right or it's having some type of a moment whether because of the marketing or something else is kind of happening outside of it right so looking at Don Tolliver's video if you go do the math on his he's at like 1.3 percent so probably running YouTube ads they're just bot comment they're just coming buying the comments pretty much right like you said to 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 keep up with the perception that is coming from this this ad yeah you know, it's gonna look crazy that you got 10 million views and 4,000 comments <laughs> <laughs> We know it's real. Yeah. You know it's real, right? Because Don Tolliver at this level probably understands that type of stuff to some degree, I, w- I would think. you know. Yeah. So you know it's real. I know it's real. Everybody that works in the industry probably has an idea of where it's coming from and knows it's real. But you know who doesn't know shit about that shit? The fucking fans, bro. They don't know the shit. The fans bro. don't know shit, bro. And they're going to look at you and go like, damn, Don Tolliver got 10 million views and 4,000 comments. Mm-hmm. This motherfucker falling off. Yeah. Fuck him. Now I'm going to listen to Yeet. You know what I'm saying? Like, because cause Yeet shit's real and it's whatever, bro. And it's like, like we say, at that level, perception and narratives are more dangerous than almost anything, bro. Yeah. Like, like, like once that snowball gets going, bro, it's a hard thing to stop. You know what I'm saying? To try mm-hmm. to get behind and stop. So it's like, labels looking like, hey, before we even give fans the chance, we're going to buy this shit up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and I think Dunn Todd was probably in rollout mode, bro. So they definitely don't want that narrative. Right now, Uzi's in, you know what I'm saying, I got a hit movie mode, right? Makes yep. sense. Yep. Roddy Rich just dropped the album. I'm in the album release mode, right? Yep. Or, or post release mode, right? So they're doing it in situations where I could understand why they're doing it. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it, it, if, they were, if it was just like some random one off release from any of them, and you know what I'm saying, it's like, wow, like, why not just see where the marketplace is at for them right now? But like, they're all in in position to push things that could lead to other bigger things or or it's big for them so i get it you know what i'm saying like yeah. we have to protect the narrative around the artists we have to protect their reputation to their fan base who are like you said already fickle as fuck and fickle don't understand shit and love the to push a negative narrative that's the sad thing about the rap the rap fan base you know what i'm saying that's that's their bread and butter that's the truth. why would i put my investment through that You wouldn't, because <laughs> you gotta protect the investment, man. <laughs> no way in hell, man. So that's that actually makes me think about uh, one thing. Blackie speaks that. Shout out to Blackie. You know you my guy. Um, he said if you want your artist to win, you wouldn't engage in those fraudulent tactics or any fraudulent tactics. And to that, I have to say, it depends on what you mean by fraudulent. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because um, there's a perception difference between somebody who's like a fan and somebody who's actually in the industry moving and they understand all the pieces. I don't know. Do you remember? It wasn't Deflate Gate. What was the Spygate? You remember Spygate? Mm. The so that's the New England Patriots. There was this big thing that oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, they were yeah. recording people's yeah. signals and and figuring out what the play was about to be called. Right. Yeah. So. People came down on them real hard, really ruined the reputation of them. And people always, whenever they win, like to point to some potential cheating because of it, right? But Tony Dungy, known around the NFL as like the sweetest guy, a coach, but never like raised his voice. You know, like in football, like that's one of them sports where people yeah. <laughs> cursing and da da da. Now, super Christian, never raising his voice, got a championship with Peyton pay- Manning. He even came out and said, look, man, everybody doing something, they just got caught. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Everybody doing something, they just got caught. And some people even say, like, if you don't bend the rules, you don't want to win. Right? Now, and <laughs> that's just the reality of the game and music. Mm-hmm. Now, again, what do you mean by bending the rules? Who is going too far? Are we bending or are we breaking? Mm-hmm. All right? Yeah, we grow up hearing, no break the rules. But if you're bending them, you probably win it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, because that's when we look back at the, all the merch shit. Fans, everybody's very aware of the merch game and how people have created bundles and use. Look, 
that actually is a rule and I'm actually using the rules. I'm bending the perception of it because it was meant to, to state one thing, but hey, part of the interpretation says I can do that. Mm -hmm. Why not do that if it's going to put me in a, in a better position? So, you know, I think it's a lot grayer than people give credit for it. And when it comes to the reality of how artists have to, to move to win. But, but yeah, like, you know, look, quote unquote, fraudulent tactics or tricky, clever tactics is just a part of what it takes, especially at that, at that level in particular. Yeah. What did uh, Sarko used to call it? Black hat marketing? <laughs> and something like that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. like have marketing yeah uh -huh. it's like and, and, like to go back to it's like we're not for or against like we don't do stuff like that you know what i'm saying like, all of our we don't use bots by the way why does why does the bad shit always have to be black you know what i'm saying <laughs> no nah, i feel it why i feel it bro black? why gotta be a black hat uh, like black hat hacker and he got it from hacking right and okay, okay. Had black hat and white hat and the white hat are the good hackers i don't know why we all got the bad shit That's <laughs> <all right. laughs> <laughs> so I don't have the conversation, <laughs> but but it's like you know, we don't do it. Yeah, I know marketers that do. Yeah. Met marketers that's a part of their thing. You know what I'm saying? Um, we don't do it because it it goes against our philosophy. It's not a part of where we want to fit into the artist building infrastructure, right? Because we're we're usually more focused on zero to seven. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. zero to seven is like no, we're not we're not doing that shit. You gonna yep. fuck you gonna fuck me up? You know what I'm saying? Yep. Doing that shit. But I do understand. I do get it. Like, I, I just, yeah. I, that is what always gets me about this conversation is like, you got to understand the context of when it's being done and if it makes sense. If it didn't make sense, yeah, you're right. Like I said, if anybody from a zero to like a six, maybe seven, really zero to five or maybe six or seven did it, you'd be like, what the fuck are you doing? You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Stop. You, you, you're hurting yourself for longevity. But if you're already at a 10 or a nine and, you know, you've been building your fan base for years and you already you already know you have a fan base. It might not be as massive as people think it is, but you know, it's 20, 30, 50, 100,000 people out there that fuck with you. Like I said, now it becomes a battle of perception. You are more than likely not playing the game of new fans. You're playing the game of perception. Hell yeah. yeah. And that brings me to, Bob Lamb also said, is it profitable to use bots? All right. You're doing all of these fake streams are you actually going to get the return of your money? Because I paid $2,000 for bots to get 200,000 streams. That 200,000 streams ain't going to give me $2,000. Yeah. All right. Is it profitable to do use bots as a music artist? Maybe. <laughs> if you ask in that question, you should not be using bots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what I say to that. All right. Because it's not about that direct ROI yeah. at all. You're not looking to get your money back from streams. Yeah. And you're looking, we talk about the brand perception. All right. And that flip, oh, it might get me this 50K commercial. Mm -hmm. It might give me this 100K commercial. All right. There's all these other things that bots are using for, are used for. And the people who are using bots at the level that are supposed to be using bots. they're not trying to make stream return from yeah. their bots. It yeah. just doesn't, that's not the game. Now, are there windows of opportunity where you can profitably use bots at the beginning or at least use bots in a way that makes sense at the beginning of your career? There's there's space and places, but those are rare. It's not a general um, advice that we would give to anybody. Yeah, nobody. Yeah, no. yeah. yeah. Right, yeah, but if I see it, if I log in your artist for Spotify, and I happen to notice, man, I turn it blind off. Like, yeah, as yeah. long as you ain't tripping on me about it, because I do think about that one artist we had like a long time ago, the one that we was about to fire that, that beat us to it. You know Ooh. <laughs> yeah. But like, <laughs> but for those of y'all listening, we had this artist we were working with, and they were faking the hell out of his streams, bro. It was crazy. Like, mm -hmm. there was one day where I remember they forgot to, I guess they forgot to re up on whatever they re up on. That shit just tanked and then just shot back up like two days later, right? Yep. And I was remembering the conversation, I'm like, yeah, like, why isn't this moving like this? We're an artist that's doing 20,000 streams a day. And it's like, did you forget who you're talking to? No, you're not. We see the numbers, bro. And that goes back to what I was saying about not getting lost in the sauce of the bot traffic, which is why yeah. I also think small artists shouldn't do it. Not even because. They're not playing the game. Well, I think if you're probably like a three to five, you, you're starting to get into playing the game of perception, right? Like you're yeah. zero to two, you're not nobody cares. Three to five, people starting to care. It's not even about that part. It's more about you start to believe the bot traffic yeah. too much, but you start psychologically talking to me crazy because you getting fifty thousand streams a day, forgetting that you just paid a motherfucker for forty thousand of them. You know what I'm saying? Like a couple of days ago, it's like, hey man. So that campaign taught me a lot. When he, when he said that shit, well, whoever said that to us said that, bro. I was like, nah, they fucking with me right now. This ain't yeah. real. This ain't a real conversation. Like, yeah, they don't believe this. 
Yeah, and it sucked because I liked this PR lady. She was so, and she was well connected. Um, actually managed a a our legit artist on one end, um, who's like a legend in his niche. But at the same time, when people get in the bots, man, they 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 get lost in the sauce so much. They, like you said, they they forget the position that they're talking from. Mm-hmm. It's like, I told you that we are going to have to build some real stuff. We only do the real stuff. We don't do the bots. Mm-hmm. Right. And if we did bots, we would let you know, this is what we're doing. Mm-hmm. There's a real business in that. Like, mm-hmm. it's not like hey, look at some point, I'm not even saying I'm going to never create a bot farm myself. You know what I mean? Like we might do that, but then the clients would just know that. Yeah, right. You know I, str- what I, mean? I struggle with it every year. Yeah, I know, <laughs> I know you do because you be like you be bringing it up. <laughs> so <laughs> it's just about manage expectations. <laughs> hey, we're working on the real stuff right now. That's this is what it's lo- it looks like, and this is the expectations that should come with it. Mm-hmm. If we're doing the bot things, we will be doing bots with the clients who understand that game and that. I wouldn't be doing bots with an artist who's working ground up, and now they're gonna be like mad, like oh, what happened? And no. We're very clear expectations. You know what this bot thing does? Hey, we got you so you can hit your numbers. Bet. We don't do bots. So don't expect that shit to pop cool. Bet, right? That's mm-hmm. two separate conversations. So <sighs> people get lost in where they are in that in that equation at the time. And then the part that I hate is when they look at the people who are giving them bots as people who are doing a better job. That's what they're like. What would get me is like, oh, I'm gonna go back to them because when when I was with him, my my numbers were popping. I got fifty thousand streams for four dollars. Yeah, hours. yeah, but don't bring them expectations, bro. Yeah. Like over here, you, you know that we're doing something different. Yeah. So, you know that yeah, those that that is what it is. That was definitely our our greatest situation. Yeah, like that, yeah. like that. Uh, that should taught me a lot. You know, you know there, <laughs> were, there were some other full pause that happened in that window. So yeah. you know, it it it, all, it broke even. <laughs> I think like something we never talked about in the podcast, but I think everyone should look into. I don't remember the guy's name, but there was a guy. I think it was during the pandemic that got caught up for having the streaming farm, and like yeah. Billboard made a whole deal about it. Uh huh. His business started booming like fuck after that, bro. Yeah. Which also was a learning moment for me because that was back when I was on it. Oh, bots are bad. You know what I'm saying? Yep, but yep, I know you yep. better, right? But that taught me so much. Cause I was like, oh, he probably lost, let's say, 60, 70% of maybe his small artists, people that were thinking about him, which he probably wasn't going for anyway, right? Yep. Every industry artist that was looking for that, oh, for real? He has an infrastructure to do this? He's, yep. he's, he's doing it for this artist and this? Oh, yeah, let me get in on that. So, that makes me think, bro. Like, if you got bots and you're doing bots and you're wasting your time just scamming, like, young, uh, like, upcoming artists, you think you're scamming these up-and-coming artists. You are scamming yourself. Yeah. Because there is real money <laughs> for people who do bots. It's one thing. So, this is how the person who is, like, hey, I'm in scammer mentality. I'm just going to have bots. This is how your life should be set up if you are just trying to maximize all sides of it. I go out for the industry. I have this front-end presence, though. So I might get some inbound business and requests from artists who are on to come up who really probably shouldn't be doing bots. Mm-hmm. And I take that business because it comes to me. But I'm not out here heavily trying to go at that audience. I don't even care about that audience. Really, I'm trying to go to the industry mm-hmm. because that's where the real money is. And I can build the relationships and I can deliver every single time. Mm-hmm. You know, my whole thing and struggle that comes from like certain types of marketing is just like you, you can't guarantee it. Yeah. Right. And yeah. you, Real marketing, you cannot guarantee in music. But bots, I can guarantee you these streams, and that's my favorite type of product. Oh, I just got to push the button, 100% customer satisfaction every time? Yeah. So if you got a bot farm, man, you are wasting if you are just hitting up these <laughs> these young kids who don't know any better. Go get the real money, and then let some of those other you know people want to come up, come in as they may. Yeah, but I bet y'all didn't wake up today expecting to get uh, consultative business advice for bot farms. <laughs> the same, that ain't on the internet, bro. I don't think anyone's ever talked about it from that perspective. How right? to do a bot yeah. farm? Yeah, bro. Hey. Well, not how to do it. How to do it smart, I think. Oh, how to I do it. Hey, how to do it smart. How to, right? how to pick your yeah. target audience for your product. Yeah. Because, yeah, man, that that just be the biggest thing I think people could take with them. But, like, once you hit a certain level, everybody doing it. So yeah. it, it only becomes shocking until you hit that point. I've had conversations with people before where, like, like I said, back 2020, 2019, early marketer, Corey, like I was very against bots, you know what I'm saying? Because I didn't understand where they fit in the funnel. And I always remember this conversation I had 
with this uh pretty successful label owner. I don't want to say his name, but it's pretty su- successful label owner here. And he's asking me about doing like playlisting for one of the artists. I'm talking about like how like, yeah, we don't believe in it because it's, it's bots in there and blah, 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 and blah, blah. Right. And I could hear in his voice that he did not give a fuck. Like, yo, all this, you no know, holier than thou. You know what I'm saying? I'm for the people and for the real bullshit. We're not looking for that, bro. We looking, we looking for this other shit. Do you have this other shit or not? Hey. No, nah, we don't. All right, well, we're not working with y'all. Damn. You know what I'm saying? What, you, what you're telling me is you can't give me the guarantee that I need. Exactly. Exactly. So you saying, if I give you this, you don't know what's going to happen. No. Nah. No, nah, I don't fuck with that. <laughs> <laughs> like, I already got a real fans. I don't need real fans. Mm-hmm. I need bots, bro. Yeah. I need numbers, not people. I need numbers, nigga. <laughs> like that's that's what it is. Yeah. That's exactly what it is, man. So look. Yeah, we're gonna we probably gonna have to do a bot farm one day, man. Then just tell y'all about it. <laughs> I've I've been wanting to do that actually, yeah. bro. I wanna do a YouTube video where we start a bot a bot farm and document the whole process. Yep. That should probably yep. go. Won't we look. No, I'm talking about like do it, do it. Do it. Oh yeah, no, hundred like, percent. Hey, <laughs> we got a bot farm. This is what we do. We ain't gonna tell you about any of our clients. This shit, that part is ironclad. Y'all wouldn't know nothing about none of the, the, the clients. But oh yeah, we got them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All those clients are super confident. We don't even brag about them on the case yep. studies. Just don't even brag them. about them. You don't even <laughs> see case studies. You don't even <laughs> see any remote connection to it. But because again, this is the reality, and it's it's the funniest thing about. And it says just how people think um, from their own perspective. It's like, oh, man, exposing this bot farm, right? And it's like, no, nah, that's marketing for the people who actually want it's it. Like, like, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, that's marketing. You think, oh, man, good for them. They got taken down. It's like, now nah, I'm glad they're being exposed. No, not being exposed. They're being exposed to the people who are right for them. Mm-hmm. That's what, what's happening. It's not an expose like you think. And... Honestly, this always I say this again and again and again. Artists, a lot of times we're not talking about the scamming people that are like that. That's that's one thing, right? And who don't have their business set up in the right way. Um, a lot of times y'all will make comments about people's business, and it'll only I the only thing it does is and identify you as somebody who's not qualified for that business. Mm-hmm. It's like when I've seen comments for people be like, "Oh man." You know, these people are too expensive, you know. And it, some of, we've had that comment about mm-hmm. our stuff before. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, that shit costs 3K or whatever or, or 1500 or whatever. Like, they'll just thought whatever number we were at the time. And then they'll think they'll be warning other people. It's like, bro, you've never done business with us. Mm-hmm. And based on your comment, you don't have the money, which means you are not a customer. So I'm glad that our funnel did exactly what it's mm-hmm. supposed to do. Like, we built the funnel to... <laughs> to push Repel you <laughs> people like you and you know price is one thing there's but there's so many parts of the funnel and mm-hmm. so many aspects that you build out to repel the people so a lot of times look i'm on the internet and something don't hit i'm like hey it must not be for me mm-hmm. i'm not like judging and saying you know it's one thing for a, between a clear scam and a yo i'm not the customer yeah I'm like, oh shit that car costs that much money or that like these people are paying Twenty dollars for a bottle of water is like, hey, maybe it's not for me. You know what I mean? Because people are buying and they successful. <laughs> somebody keeping this ad running. Hey, somebody keeping this. <laughs> hey, somebody keeping this ad running and it keeps running. It keeps running. So that money must be coming in. So you know, and I think that from a marketer standpoint, especially, you kind of have to think like that. Yeah, yeah. Like just see beyond yourself. That's what I love about it, actually. And if you're bad at marketing, you probably can't see beyond yourself. Yeah. The best you can do in a marketing aspect, if you are like completely self-centered and can't be aware of these smaller elements, is self-promotion. Like if you're somebody who can like talk and like just like that that self-promotion, you can be really good at that without understanding marketing for mm-hmm. real, for real. Yeah. All right. But that's about it. You, you can't, especially if you have to do it for somebody else, right? Mm-hmm. You're not going to be able to connect those dots the same. Because yeah. everybody doesn't have your own talent in, in, in that way of doing things. But, um, yeah, man, I I, I think you're right. And I don't think I'm, I, I, no one expected a bot for our consultation. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely expect to go that direction. But, hey, what, there it was. And here we are. What's up? What's up? If you enjoyed this clip, make sure you watch the full episode right here.